Hey, how's everyone doing today? This is Josh Noel from Premium B, and in this tutorial, we're going to stabilize footage inside of Adobe Premiere. So here we are in Premiere. We already have our clip in the timeline, and I'm gonna play the clip real fast and take a look at the noticeable camera shake, mostly at the beginning here. You can see the camera's bouncing up and down a little bit, and this is because we shot it on our shoulder rig and we kind of did it really fast. And we have a little bit of camera shake that we can fix easily here in post. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So what we want to do is go to the effects window or go up to window effects and we'll go to the video effects folder and we'll go to distort and we'll grab the warp stabilizer effect or you can just type it in at the top. Drag the effect on top of your clip. Warp stabilizer will automatically analyze and stabilize your shot. And we go to the effects controls and you can see how much time is left and it usually will take a few minutes depending on the length of the shot and resolution. And what's nice about Warp Stabilizer is that you can work on another edit while this is uh, analyzing. So you don't really have to, you know, wait a couple of minutes, you know, grab a cup of coffee, you can continue to work. So that's really nice. Okay, so the stabilization has been applied to the shot. And there's two things that I look for when I play back the clip. One thing I look for is how much has the image been cropped? And secondly, how much warping is going on? So let's play the shot and see what we have. And this is in half quality. So for the most part, I mean, this is all pretty much you know, nicely stabilized. And, you know, I don't really see too much warping or anything going on there. But the thing is that does bother me that this shot was significantly scaled in. So if I hide this effect for one second, you can see how much this shot was scaled in. And I'm not a big fan of losing all that resolution on the side there. And another thing you want to take, you know, take into account is that there's also going to be some times when you're going to have a little bit of uh, blurriness depending on how shaky your footage was on you know some noticeable areas like the characters faces and this is where you want to start dialing down the effect and some shots you, the background might actually warp towards the screen and you know you'll be able to notice that and I see it all the time when people are using warp stabilizer you know you'll have all these warping areas in the shot and th this can be an easy fix all you have to do is adjust some of these settings and we're gonna go ahead and explore it so no matter what situation that you're in you can go ahead and perfect your shot let's take a quick look how a warp stabilizer works if we go to framing and we set this to stabilize only we'll see that the shot is just going to be not cropped but it's going to be stabilized so that's basically the first uh, foundation of how this effect works if you go to stabilize crop you'll see that we'll see the uh, border around our image uh, without the scale but it's not you know wiggling around it's been cropped and we then we go to what i like keeping on stabilize crop auto scale and basically it'll do that nice stabilization, it'll crop it, and it'll scale up your image. And in this case, it scales it up by too much. So what we can do is bring down the smoothness of the shot. So believe it or not, 50% might seem like a fair value, but if you bring it down to something like 5%, it's gonna still do a really good job of stabilizing your shot. And replaying this clip back at 5%, we can see that there is a little bit of, you can start to see some of that shoulder rig movement, but it's smooth, it's not, you know, jarring how it was before. And this effect doesn't draw a lot of attention to itself. We have no warping elements in the background. We have nothing to worry about, you know, focus or any of the blurring going on. It just seems to be a very smooth, very neutral way of going about this without having any issues with the clip. And we bring back some of the crop. Now we can go into the advanced tab and we have crop less and smooth more. Now I of course like to adjust this as well. Maybe go down to 25% and play this back at, you know, crop less 25% we'll see that the scale is not as great and we're able to hold some of that resolution instead of losing everything. So if I go ahead and turn this off real fast, you can see we're not losing as much as before. We're still losing and just applying this effect, you're gonna lose a lot of uh, detail around the edges. It's just what's gonna happen, but it's not as bad and we're having a very neutral uh, effect. Now the blur that I talked about that you'll get, sometimes you'll get with this effect, uh, all you can do to fix that is under the, ro the rolling shutter ripple it's under automatic reduction. If you want to try your best, you can go ahead and set it to enhanced reduction, but sometimes your settings are just going to have to be lowered down to avoid all that, uh, you know, extra blurriness. And that's just due to your camera shake. This is obviously a shot where we're tracking backwards with our talent. Now we did, if, say if we shot this just completely handheld, like we wanted a tripod shot, but we shot this handheld. We might want to set this to no motion, but if you set it to no motion for with a shot where it's actually tracking back or dollying, you get, you know, obviously this weird effect. So make sure, depending on what you're doing, if you're doing like a, a handheld shot that's supposed to be static, you can set the no motion. If, you know, obviously in this case, we want to keep that smooth motion or we're going to totally mess up the shot. And for the method, 
These are just different ways that it can stabilize your shot, either by just positioning or position scale rotation or just by perspective. I just keep this as subspace warp because these other three options, I, I in my opinion, does not give nowhere near the best uh, result as a subspace warp. So I just keep that at uh, subspace warp. And I don't ever check on preserve scale if you're interested in that. But for the most part, the two parameters that are going to affect the stabilization of your shot the most is the smoothness and the crop less smooth more. So for your shot, it's going to vary depending on what you're doing, but go ahead and experiment with those parameters and you should have a very smooth result. And here's our clip rendered with the warp stabilizer effect applied. And it looks very nice. You know, it doesn't draw any attention to itself and that's something you need to look when you're applying this effect, make sure that the effect doesn't draw any attention and you're not overdoing it. So, so hope you guys enjoyed this video. For more tutorials, please be sure to check out our blog at premiumbeat.com. And if you're in the need for royalty-free music, we have a huge library full of great music for your projects. And once again, thank you for watching this video. And this has been Joshua Noel from premiumbeat.com.